if you see the dollar versus the Swiss, Swiss is seen to be, you know, a safe haven. Well, the dollar's, you know, certainly getting sold off. You know, we've seen a, a big breakthrough, um, you know, 0 0.9, uh, 0877. You know, that's a good, strong level. And then it's continuing to sell down. I mean, I'm, I'm a simple man. You know, uh, I, I try and stick to things that make sense to me. And all my charts, all the things I understand revolve around what's happened in the past or what's happened in the future. Fibonacci. Okay, so this is my Fibonacci sequence in play. I've drawn a chart for you. When, when we try and make new highs, there's a certain level of where we can go to, okay, which would be these two levels up here. Then the market stops, and it aims for the 50%. When it closes below the 50%, okay, it looks to test the lower, okay, 161, 261, and 423 extension points of, uh, uh, retracement points of Fibonacci. So... Is anybody out there, can anybody tell me if that works? Yes. Yes, it does. Now, again, these aren't my rules. This is the laws of nature, the laws of Fibonacci, you know, Leonardo Pisa. Smarter guys than me have invented these things. But it's using it in the right kind of way. Okay, it's understanding when the market may have peaked, and when it has peaked, what it's going to do. And these are hourly charts. You'd have to wait quite a long time for the market to bottom out down here, and maybe it's not finished. Okay, maybe it's got further to go. Maybe it gets down to, you know, 89, 666. But understanding how markets move is the key to understanding trading. Okay, it's all cyclical. Things go up, things go down. The harder and faster it goes up, the quicker and faster it goes down. I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. 20 candles to go up from here to here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five candles to go down. So the quicker it goes up, the quicker things go down. And it, it doesn't... Again, I mean, that's the, just from my experience, the way I view the markets. Maybe I'm a natural pessimist, but I like selling into fear. People are greedy. Okay, so when things are high, people are bought into it, you know, on the you, you, you know, euphoric, yeah, you know, the, the dollar is going to appreciate against, you know, the, the Swiss. We're going to make loads of money. Oh, oh, it's going down. Sell it, sell it, sell it. Then the overextensions come in. So for me, it always works on the upside to the downside better. And that's why I like the Fibonacci retracement kind of scenarios because the quicker it goes up the quicker people cash in okay so realistically you know let's look um on the higher time frames and just see exactly you know what's happened in the uh in, in the swiss I mean so really you know we're on quite a steady and uh, you know sustained bear run you know that from since 2001 you know from talking you know 14 years the market's been Heavily sold off from these highs up here. You know, you know back in 2001, we're you know up at 1.8, and now we're currently trading you know less than you know le le you know 0 0.92. So a big big drop. I mean, <sighs> what you have to try and do is understand that what what the world was like back here when the market was up is a different world. I mean, you know that's 2000. You know we you know, we were almost talking you know, pre-9-11 stuff, you know, that's when the world was brilliant, yeah, everything, everyone's going to be a millionaire and, and the world was great, and then obviously, you know, bad things happen in the world, then we get to like 2005, 2006, the reality is that the world is not quite as great as we think, all these politicians are really just guys, they don't really know what's going on, so again, the, the, the kind of dollar really kind of starts to kind of depreciate against the Swiss because, you know, the Swiss is a safe haven, so, that, you know, it's, it's a protected little bubble of a world, that, you know, people, rich people want to put the money in. So that's why you see the dollar, you know, going down as times, you know, are perceived to be uh, better. So I, I guess it's a bit of a contradicting chart for me in, in some reasons because I think the world's more unpredictable than it ever has been. Well, ever has been. So um, I, I, I would expect, you know, really the kind of dollar Swiss to be more up here. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a really tough call, to be honest. It's a tough kind of toss-up because... You know, words, it's that perceived value. I mean, again, it's what, you know, if you have so much money that you have to worry about, you know, holding vast reserves of, of, of different currencies, then really, what, you know, what are your issues? The average man on the street doesn't have the worries about, you know, is my money safe in the bank? You know, the UK have taken care of that. So the whole currency things are always a really difficult thing for me to kind of get my head around. I generally stick to, you know, the gold. Uh, indices, you know, the, the DAX, the, the S&P, I can understand that mentality. The currency side of it, I always find a little bit 
contrarian and, and, and contradictory. So it's very difficult. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, you've got to draw some studies on this. I mean, it's, it's fairly pointless going back to these kind of times. I would say there's significant highs are here, significant lows are here. So market has come down, really rejected on the monthly charts these lows. Hit the 50%, 50% became resistance, market's going down. So in the next 12 months, we make a new low. So the dollar versus the Swiss breaks 0.7. That's it. That, that, you know, that's, that's it. If you want to do anything else, then do that. Okay, we've closed below the 50% of the monthlies. Try to break it above it. Yeah, upper Bollinger Band rejected. Upper Bollinger Band rejected. Treating the moving average and the monthly as resistance towards the lower end of the Bollinger Bands. So uh, essentially, once we close below the 38.2, okay, on the monthlies, the market's going to drop. So Steve Ruffley's prediction is we drop 2,000 ticks in the next 12 months in the dollar versus the Swiss. Simple as that. Go to the weekly charts. Again, you know, looking quite quite bearish. You know, areas up here, areas up here, where the market simply refused to push any higher. And again, we're finding the moving average to be, you know, resistance. You know, we've closed above it here, but the market's instantly, the next weekly candle, you know, retraced nearly all these gains. So it's looking like the market wants to get down to these lower levels at 0.87981. It breaks below that. You've got clear targets. This is a big target. Okay, that these lows are a big, big target. Dailies, again, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Again, markets really tried and then broke above. So one of these little kind of cheeky fake out scenarios. I mean, look at these daily candles. Tried to break above, rejected. Tried to break above, rejected. One final push. Couldn't get anywhere near the upper Bollinger Bands of the previous highs. Red selling day. So the momentum really is carrying on. So look at that on the hourly chart. And you've, you know, you've got an idea. I mean, obviously, you've seen the big sell-off over the last few hours. But you know, what's going to happen? What I would say is, again, you know, use your Fibonacci in a more meaningful time frame. And we starts here. So we're going to get back to maybe the 50%. Okay, so the market maybe might get to 50%. You know, it depends how strong the down move is. You know, maybe it goes up another 34, 35 ticks. When it doesn't, it has to make a new low. And where's the next point of resistance? It's down here, as I said. So you've got basically your 50%. If you go short any time now, you've got a 30-tick stop to a 220-tick reward. So that, that's good. I mean, that's like 8 to 1. I mean, that's that, that's as good as risk reward as you're going to look for. Uh, but it, again, it, I guess it depends on your uh, on your view on what, um, what the dollar's going to do against the Swiss. So, that's that chart. Okay, that's that taken care of. Um, other things you might want to look at. Let's put that back to... What? Other things you might want to look at. got the dollar Canadian. I, I just find that a completely pointless um, thing to trade. I'm sure the people out there, uh, I know that a lot of people trade different um, currency and exotic pairs, so I'm not going to start saying, you know, that these aren't worthwhile trading, but... To me, the correlation between the US and, and, and Canada suits when it suits, and then doesn't suit when it doesn't suit. I can't really find any any solid, logical, fundamental, or technical reasons why I would trade that pair. So I stay away from it. Okay, and that's again just going back to the rules of how I trade, how I've survived in the markets. I only trade what I understand. So I generally don't trade things like Asian stocks. Um, uh, you know, and, and the Asian markets, because I don't really understand them. Uh, I understand the US, I understand the UK markets, and Europe. That, that's a lot of money to kind of go at. 